So let me tell you what happened with you, with with, uh, with uh, Lil Candice. Mm -hmm. So uh, she's on the microphone. She's on the megaphone speaking. Of course, we got our camera running. Stephanie's shooting her. Uh, and if we got some of that video, y'all can play it if y'all want to. Uh, and so we are. And so all of a sudden, Fox News does an interview with her. So they literally walk over and they're right in front of me. Mm -hmm. So literally where Shannon is sitting. Matter of fact, not even that far. They're doing the interview. So I'm standing there. I'm not gonna move. <laughs> so I'm so this is exactly how I'm standing, like this here. <laughs> my hands in my pockets. Just watch and I'm watching the speaker, I'm watching other people, and I'm watching the interview. So when the interview is over, the interview's over, she turns and sees me and just <laughs> and gives me this nasty look. And I just smile back. <laughs> what are you doing here? And I said, I cover black stuff, Candace. <laughs> This is a black event. And are you here just to smear us and lie about us? I said, no, there's a camera over there. We're actually recording what's going on. <laughs> and this is where she screwed up. She says, well, uh, look, I want to know, why did you call Republicans Uncle Toms? You've never. And sellouts. <laughs> You've never. And you called me a coon. I said, pull out my car. I said, here's my card. You send me the evidence where I called you a coon. Oh, yes, you did. That's why I blocked you. I said, I will wait for you to send the evidence, and then you're going to apologize because what you just said is a lie. And, I, and see, that's the thing. So one, of her little, her, one of her little imps uh, who was walking behind her, he says, oh, we got the evidence. I said, all you got to do is send me the email. I said, well, I'll give you my card, too, because you're going to apologize to me when I'm done. And then Charlie Kirk, he comes up to me, and he goes, hi, Roland. I'm like, how you doing? Okay. And he's, he's looking at me. He's like, and I go, how you doing? Then I finally go, who are you? Because <laughs> I'm Charlie Kirk. Like, I have to know who the hell Charlie Kirk is. And so, and he goes, I said, so, I said, well, y'all clearly didn't, y'all uh, took our credentials. I said, so when y'all gonna come on the show? Uh, oh, we'll, we'll be more than happy. I said, so when you gonna do it? Oh, oh, oh I, I gotta ask Candace first. I said, why don't you go ask Candace? I said, because both of y'all are running from me. <clears throat> see, the re what I don't have is, because I got no respect for you, when you go do the Hill TV, which is in the same building as us, but you, but you say you're trying to talk to black people, but you won't come talk to black people. See, that, that's my problem, Shannon. See, okay, but again, there's an issue. There's a difference between folks that are about this life to make a change in people's lives and that are about this life to make a change in their own lives. And there's a difference in, again, the strategies and the tactics. When, for the reasons when we came to Baltimore and things were just so messed up in that city, and they still are, and we tried to do some more. I said to folks, okay, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to the corner of Penn and North, and we're gonna register folks to vote. Well, you know, a lot of these folks, they can't vote, and they're, they're, they're you know, offenders, and oh, okay, well, we're gonna find out. And that's what we did. And there were some folks that were clearly outside of their comfort zone, but if you wanna change the narrative, if you wanna reach beyond the choir, you gotta stop singing and talking to the choir. And the thing that you mentioned with some of the folks and people following them, there is, there is a Pied Piper mentality at times where you're preaching to the choir, the choir listens, the choir responds. That's, that's how, in my line of work, that's what you do, that's how it's done. So when you take that outside, people expect that same kind of response and when they don't get it, they don't always know how to combat that. But if, again, if you're in it for the people, you gotta deal with people. <laughs> Right. Black people. Period. Right. And, and, and again, the, and the, the point I'm, because it was very interesting, again, having this dialogue and these conversations with these young brothers and sisters, who also, you know, I know it was killing Candace and Charlie, because I swear I took about 30 or 40 selfies out there, and they probably trying to figure out what the hell going on, because what they don't realize is, they also watch me. Mm -hmm. Cats were saying, dude, I also watch your show. My parents watch your show. And see, that's the thing that a Candace and Charlie doesn't understand, is that black folks know black folks. So even though they may call themselves young black conservatives, they also know who the hell I am and they've heard my commentary before. And so even if we engage in a back and forth, uh, you're not going to get far. And here's the other thing that Candace is, look, and, and let me just be real clear, why conservatives love this, and y'all know the game that's being played, they love it when you have a black conservative who goes on television and uses plantation language and who says victimhood. We all know the buzzwords uh, and all the different stuff along those lines. And what I keep saying is if you think you're going to come and attack black people on a Fox News or you're going to attack them in platforms and then think they're going to listen to you, you got a whole other thing coming. 
I said what you should be doing is presenting an agenda that, that somebody will go, okay, you know what? I'll listen to that. But if you tell somebody black why you're on the plantation, the first thing, ain't nobody black trying to hear slave language, <laughs> okay? The other problem I have with that is they give this impression that black people who do vote Democrat somehow can't think. So I told one brother, I said, hold up. So are <clears throat> you an independent thinker, but they're not? Because the reality is, African Americans are some of the most astute voting people out there. When you, because people say, "Oh, y'all, people just vote for Democrat." No, no, black people, people act like black people know what they're doing. Black folks know exactly what they're doing when they're voting, Brandon. Uh, yeah, I don't want to disagree with that, but I do want to point out to your point when you say that some of the people you talked today at the outside the White House were saying that black Democrats are mindless and you don't know what they're voting for. That same argument has been used against black conservatives. So all I want to point out is actually, that... I, actually, it, I use the same argument against... Yeah. If, if somebody wants to use that argument against black people, I can use the same argument for white, poor okay. folks exactly. who live in communities because it... Because right. the, but, but here's the problem. The problem is if you are a black Republican trying to get black people to listen to you, right. you don't condemn them and demean them and act as if they are dumb and just following somebody else as opposed to going, wait a minute... Black, black people are making conscious decisions based upon a set of reasons that are clearly defined. And as long as Republicans are unwilling to engage with black people, hell, of course anybody black gonna consider you because you won't even come talk to black people. And let's be clear, some black, some Republicans, don't say all, we have a Republican come on the show later today who's not scared to engage with black people. No, I got you. So not all Republicans, no, but let me but, say this. To your point, I agree with you. We should not demean Democrats for voting how they vote. But I think that should be applied in a reverse way as well. I'm telling you, watching the coverage of Kanye West after his vote, even your coverage a little bit, Roland, I understand you don't agree with him, but the idea that you're basically devaluing him and his thought and his opinion no, actually, because you if, don't agree. You, you were more factual. No, no, no. But watch you, the Don Lemon show, watch other people's shows. How I ain't they, Don how, Lemon. How, I agree. But how the narrative... I on, ain't no way in hell I'm Don Lemon. <laughs> I'm glad for that. That's why I come on your show. But overall, the narrative against, uh, against Kanye... A lot of it was dehumanizing and the fact that he could not think he's being used. He could not possibly make a conscious, informed decision to support Trump. And you can understand it. So, yeah, I well, just feel we, like we, there's... We also know he got some issues there. Uh, but Shannon, see, go there ahead. we go again. No, oh, no, 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 no. Wait. His own wife said he's got some issues. But He himself that, told us he's got some issues. Everybody, everybody, a lot of people in the country have No, 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 no. Not he got, fact. like, like medicine-induced issues. But I don't think you should make that as a case as why he's... Oh, no, no. I must, like but what I'm saying is... Okay, Keep dude, it factual. Keep it policy-wise. Brandon, Brandon, it factual, Brandon, he, Brandon, he left the White House and went to the Apple Store yeah, in Georgetown on the table, and it. jumped on the damn table he's at the Apple Store in Georgetown and began to rant and rave, Rich? jumped off and ran out. Brandon, Rich in 2018. Okay. Brandon, do you know what we call that? Stuff. Do Brandon, you know what we call that? Centric. His ass crazy. <laughs> I was going to say, put the rope down. Stop spinning. Right, right. Leave it alone. Yes. Right. He was trying, Shannon, but <laughs> no, damn it. No, I'm just saying. It's, you know what? Respect their beliefs. Don't it, go to policy and facts like you do. Don't talk you. about the person. Go ahead. Don't talk about the person. Hear, hear what you're saying. However, there are certain times in, in our history, both past and, and more, more recent, where there are some points to be made for uh, doing some work on health care, specifically mental health care. I'm just going to say. Wait a minute. I had one dude who literally are, got mad. He said, well, man, why you dog Kanye? I said, bruh, you can't sit in front of Donald Trump and say that Donald Trump, that we need mental health services, when the 20, and the budget of Donald Trump is cutting literally $20 billion from mental health services, a 17.9% drop. I said, dude, you can't go, yeah, Trump agreed with him on that, mm -hmm. when his actual policy is the opposite of what he's preaching. Kanye was saying, we need, we need more, we need help with mental services, and Trump is sitting there going, Oh, look at Kanye, knowing full well, he's slashing 20 billion for mental health services. Like I said, a lot of the issues and things that we've seen in our society over the recent years stem back to some, some folks that need some assistance. Mm -hmm. Seriously, all jokes aside. I love to stay on, on the policy topics of it and talking about that way. And you, like you said today, outside the White House, you were cutting them up based on policy. And that's all for that, on facts. But when we get to the personal... Hurt them too. I saw it. When you get to the personal and dehumanizing part, on either side, I just dislike that. Well, again, Ray Baker, Ray Baker Media joined us. And again, Ray, uh, I tweeted this. Candace Owens, you can apologize to me. Because, see, she did the same thing. When Daryl Scott had to roll up on me at the Republican National Convention, said, you called me an Uncle Tom and a coon. I said, show me the proof. I said, you ain't got proof. And he had to apologize for that screw up. See, this is the, mis this, see, this is the mistake that Candace Owens makes. First of all, I'm a grown ass man. 
That's first. And the mistake that they make is they act as if I've never talked to black Republicans. And see, she's a Johnny come lately. 2016, to your point, yeah. she was running a Donald Trump, anti-Donald Trump uh, a website. She's no different to me than GOP black chick Crystal Wright. OK, who was who was trying to help uh, uh, my man um, uh, uh, Kendrick Meek get elected as Florida United States Senator Democrat. And all of a sudden, a month later, she's like, "Yay, I'm a Republican. No, you're trying to get paid. We know the game. Game recognized game. And Ray, that's what we're seeing here. And let me be real clear. And I want you to speak on this. I've talked to a number of longtime black Republicans who have been at the table of power who say this is nothing but a joke. You're right, Roland, and there are a lot of African Americans who try to jump into the Republican Party to do nothing more than to cut the line. They're not showing the intellectual wherewithal, the political skills. Some have admitted to me. Yeah, Go ahead. And gamesmanship to be able to be the type of political operative they would like to be in the Democratic Party or where they may feel more comfortable. And so they think, well, if I'm the black Republican, I finally have an opportunity to cut the line. Now, to your point, Brandon, and I came in, I heard a little bit of what you were saying toward the end. Conversations about policy matter, right? We can agree to disagree. We can understand policy different. We can want different aims for our nation and thus would want to get there through different ways. But when folks have individualistic motives, right? And this is not a reference to either one of you two, but this is that when folks have individualistic motives, then we see ultimately they're going to seek themselves first. And whoever happens to be the flavor of the month or the flavor of the day is where they're going to tie their horse. And the bottom line is, again, I've seen just Lee Peterson. I've seen Larry Elder. I've seen Star Parker. I've seen Deneen Borelli. I've seen this game. And actually, it's insulting to black Republicans who are putting in the work to see folks who somehow let where you have uh, uh, white conservative, typically evangelical money, throw their way at those at these folks. Look, and I said it, I blasted him on this show. I don't know why in the hell y'all keep giving money to Raynard Jackson because Raynard ain't doing nothing with it. Y'all know I ain't lying, and nobody want to. But it's like, but it's the same thing. It's like it's the game. It's the game, and the, and black people recognize the game, and you're not serious, and that's the problem. It is, and you, and you find that, like I said all over in all walks and all lanes of the road so here's it's, the great final comment go ahead but one one of the things though about the game politics public policy are people's lives yep Absolutely. and so if if you want to if you want to hustle and you want to you know get a hustle to be a, a sports manager or in the entertainment business whatever we can laugh and joke and about that's what that we were talking but about when we talk about public exactly policy, that that, that when you are lives. and that's what we're talking about the difference between the strategy and the tactics whether you are in it for your own personal gain or for people's yep gain. And so here's different. So here's it's the deal. Clear. Final comment on this topic here. To Charlie Kirk and Candace Owens. Y'all want an actual conversation? Come to this set and we'll do it for an hour. We'll do it for two hours. We'll do it for three hours. Because you know what? This is my show. See that name right there? Roller Martin Unfiltered. This is mine. So if y'all are serious, if y'all want some of this, more than welcome to come sit in this chair. But I would advise you. Do your homework before you walk in here, because it may not go well if you don't. Ask a whole bunch of people who being embarrassed on YouTube right now. Okay? Holler at a brother if y'all ready.